And welcome back to the Heart of Chaos. I am Javier once again, and I want to welcome you to my next project, the Jack and Dexter HD Collection. This is going to be a great undertaking, because I will not be doing just one, not two, but all three Jack and Dexter games. As you can see, I've completed the first two pretty much, and haven't really touched the third one just yet. But, uh, that's not a big problem right now, I don't think. Uh, well, this will not be immediately one after the other. Uh, there will be breaks in between each game. And obviously we're starting with Jack and Daxter and the Precursor Legacy. Why don't we get that started, huh? Who's excited? Welcome to the beginning of what I think is going to be a grand project. I want to warn, this is a 100% run. We will be getting all of the collectibles. So I hope you'll stay and enjoy the ride. Also, one thing I will point out is that there are no subtitles for Jack and Daxter. What I will be doing, though, is I am going to be nice and I'm going to take the time and edit in the subtitles so there will be always something to help you hear as there's a lot of points in this game where I would consider it very hard of hearing also I apologize but my PS3 is a very loud son of a bee you're probably going to hear it if I manage not to cut it out at certain points and if you do I apologize I'll try my best so why don't we get this game started huh let's go to new game Let's save over the second file. I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose? And why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <laughs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Continue your search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. 
The sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now, I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go, Misty Island. That's right, and then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man, are you gonna keep yapping, or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the Sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer, at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark, gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there! Before I turn you both into ferns! Well then, it seems there was a bit more to Jack and Daxter than we originally thought. Uh, first thing I'm going to want to do from the very beginning... Oh, hi. With it, my father and I can give you advice at any time during your quest. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of talking in these uh, first parts. Uh, this game is very heavy, heavily gameplay focused, but at the beginning they feel free to hold your hand and uh, make sure. Uh, the Jack and Daxter series is actually notab notably difficult. Uh, the first game less so, but the next few very much so. Anyway, first thing I'm going to want to do is you're going to want to pause, go into the options menu, and you're going to want to actually flip the horizontal camera control because that way you'll actually be able to, uh, you know, turn the way you want to turn. Uh, the vertical controls are going to be weird no matter what. Uh, you can mess with it as you see fit. Also, I just want to say that, wow, this game looks really good. Uh, it has aged remarkably well. Uh, it doesn't seem that they really upgraded any of the textures. Uh, they seem to just uncompress them and uh, upgraded the resolution, which it really holds up. There are definitely some parts that show their age, but uh, that's not so bad. Anyway, uh, as you'll see f around here, there are these treasure chests. You go ahead and break them with the square button or circle button. 
and you will get these green orbs. Uh, these green orbs will be used as to collect. You collect 50 of them to gain one life, and if you already have maximum life, uh, don't worry, as you will just be gaining more. Are precursor orbs. Collect enough of them, and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. Okay, so these are, as we just heard, precursor orbs. Uh, collecting all of these in a given area will get us a check mark for the zone. Uh, I should also point out that villagers will, people you talk to, not just villagers, will want to trade them for the power cells, if you've heard before. Speaking of power cells. Sensing a theme here. Uh, if you basically played a collectathon, like, you know, Banjo Kazooie, this is going to remind you so much of the 90s. Uh, that's actually one thing I will get into when we get into the next uh, Jack and the Jack games and continue the trilogy. Uh, this game evolved and basically died off with the 90s, which I, which uh, my girlfriend has told me, you know, believe she died off in the early 2000s, about 2004. So just the neat little fact, this game is basically 90s incarnate. So if you like the, if you miss the 90s and are looking for a throwback, just to that type of humor, uh, that's always a thing. Anyway, what we just got explained to just now are that these boxes, you bounce into them, and you'll get a scout fly. There are seven scout flies in each zone in the game. Uh, you will know a different zone it's merely by the text that pops up. Collecting all seven will net you a power cell from the last one you collect. See, it's so 90s because even when you dance around like that, it's just like... That, that just reminds you so much. Okay, there's nothing down there that I'd want. Okay. All right, we're not through yet, so let's go ahead. Uh, as they're noticing, uh, these uh, dummies over here, you do not have to break. They're really just meant to show you that there are going to be enemies everywhere. And I do mean everywhere. Anything down there that I'd want? There are. Yay. Ooh, okay. That over there, those blue spheres, I'm sure will be explained to me in a second. But collecting these, these are blue eco chunks. Uh, collecting them speeds you up. It also draws all things that you can collect around you towards you. It's really useful and it's going to be mandatory to master it as there are many instances in the game that use blue eco chunks and blue eco in general. Here he is explaining exactly what I just explained, though without the fourth wall breaking, I imagine. Also, I should probably point out, since this is just tutorial based, uh, I'm gonna. I can't hear the dialogue! Uh, I have to keep my TV rather low in order to allow me to, you know, not have feedback, at least too much feedback. And uh, with that in mind, I, I had trouble hearing Jack and Dexter uh, before due to my PS3 being so loud. So, li literally, I don't hear the game's dialogue. Luckily for me, I've recently played through it, so I know what they're saying, mostly, and uh, if not, I can always, uh, you know, look into it on my own time and figure things out, so things should be alright. I hope it's not too clunky and uh, things are work out alright. Anyway, this over here... This is a precursor door. It can only be opened by approaching the door while channeling Blue Eco through your body. This door can only be activated when you have a blue eco chunk or a blue eco vent. Sco blue eco basically coursing through your veins. That's a blue eco vent. More concentrated than the floating clusters. This vent will give you a full charge of blue eco, letting you use it for the maximum time. Thank you, Kira. Alright, so if we step through this, we get the maximum amount of blue eco. And with that, we will be able to run through this area and collect us another power cell. As you can see, the trend of this is to explore areas to find all the power cells, as well as completing tasks that would help you net more, would net you more power cells. Uh, each there are a maximum amount of power cells. There are a total of 101 power cells throughout the game, 
and a total of 2,000 precursor orbs. So if you're if you're a one to gain 100%, and I'd highly recommend doing it because this is a type of game that really rewards that kind of play. Pick up 50 small green ecos or one big green one to increase your health. I apologize for the cut. The phone started ringing and I wanted to make sure nothing got in the way and I didn't want the phone here. Anyway, uh, they just explained green eco, which is really weird because you can collect that stuff pretty much in immediately. Anyway, uh, if you realize, if you haven't seen me doing it already, you can very easily double jump by pressing the X button twice. Also, we've just collected all of the stuff in Geyser Rock. Woo! That's our first area completed! Why don't we go ahead and head back to the sage, who named Samos. And, uh, let's go and hopefully get a- get some praise, right? I mean, we just got lectured, let's get some praise now. Uh, you have the choice of teleporting to Green Sage's Hut, Green Sage's Hut, and Green Sage's Hut. Huh. A lot of variety. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. Ah, then no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're, uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! And that's what I'll say to you. Get out of here, because the episode's over. I'm an LVF Chaotic Reunion, and in the next episode of Jack and Jackster and the Precursor Legacy, we're going to head down to the village and see what troubles the villagers. I'll see you all then.